All right, welcome everyone. This is episode three of Each One Teach One with your hosts, Nate Boston and Sujay Nair. Uh, we're going to get into the topic of fear today. And with that, I'm going to start with a quote from Manly P. Hall in his book, The Secret Teachings of All Ages. This very nice book. And this quote says, in his De Ente Spirituali, Paracelsus writes that thus of these malignant beings, a healthy, a, a healthy and pure person cannot be obsessed by them because such larvae can act only on upon men if the latter make room for them in their minds. A healthy mind is a castle that cannot be invaded without the will of its master. But if, it, if they are allowed to enter, they excite the passions of men and women, they create cravings in them, they produce bad thoughts which act injuriously upon the brain, they sharpen the animal intellect and suffocate the moral sense. Evil spirits obsess only those humans, human beings in whom the animal nature is predominating. Minds, minds that are illuminated by the spirit of truth cannot be possessed. Only those who are habitually guided by their lower impulses may become subjected to their influences by Paracelsus. Um, so thought that was very pertinent to our topic here. And um, the first thing I want to say is fear is not a human emotion whatsoever. You know, it's not natural to human beings. And we're not meant to be at, we're meant to be at peace. I don't know if you agree with that. We're meant to be at peace and limitless with our divine potential. Yeah, peace is wellness, right? That's right. That's why we say all is one, all is well. Wow. Because you know, if you're not at peace and you're not feeling well, then you, you know you're not feeling good. That's right. You know, and All then time. it keeps your mind not at ease, right? It keeps you, you know, feeling as if you know, doubt. And that's what you know. You just read. I feel that that whole passage was that beings outside of ourselves, known as thought forms, mm -hmm. cause doubt. They call us to doubt ourselves. Our inner peace is always second guessing on if we're doing the right things, you know? Uh, some people will call that being self-conscious, right? Mm -hmm. But at times it's a difference between being self-conscious and having fear and doubt, right? That's right. Fear is based off of the thoughts of your false evidence appearing real. You know, you think that things could be the way that they're not. You know, the real reality that you're living in is not showing you that, but you're in your head, you're thinking, oh, this might happen, that might happen. You're in a constant state of, you know, paranoia. And living in the future. It, it reminds me of that movie um, After After Earth with Will Smith, right? There was a passage there he said, uh, it was a quote he said, something about, you know, fear is not even, it's not real. You know, it's it's you thinking in the future that something's going to happen that hasn't happened already. It's irrational, you know, and uh, let's define fear to begin with. Um, we just said that it's not a human emotion. It's a foreign intelligence. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a spiritual force, which can only be combated with love and courage love for oneself and courage. So uh, it makes one doubt, as you said, it makes one actually it makes one stupid. <laughs> I, there are good kinds of I mean, there, I think there's a difference between fear and awareness, don't you think? It totally is when you're aware, right? You respond to things better because now you're using wisdom. You know, you, you, you're looking at the facts and the evidence, and then you're coming to a hypothesis or a conclusion that's based on facts and evidence that you can prove, right. you know? But fear is, you know, things that haven't been proven that you don't know, right? When you don't know something, you fear it, and mm -hmm. it causes you to react. You know, you might even take steps to initiate a process that you regret later. That's what fear does. That's right. right. 
Yeah. In our current uh, world, that's all we have around us all day. It's to the point now you got to fit your neighbor, you know, because because the media tells you to do that. <laughs> so you're, you your neighbor. Sir, what? Your okay. neighbor. Your, 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 your common man, your, your neighbor. Oh, yeah. Your next door neighbor. Of course. You know? Yeah. It's... You know, everybody's always uh, trying to play these power games of upper hand. You exactly. know, they're trying to, you know, get more energy resources from the next man. Instead of building together, you know, everybody has a fear of scarcity. Yeah. I don't have enough. Mm -hmm. I might not have enough for tomorrow. And that's not organic. That's not how the natural state of the earth, which is abundance, right? Yeah, it literally is the natural state of the earth. Like, look, we have water everywhere. Or nature, I should say, not earth, but it, yeah. Yeah, nature is all synonymous, same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have water everywhere. You're made out of water. Yeah. But they try to make us feel as if we're not going to have enough water, climate change. Which is you know I mean? We got polar ice caps that are still solid in ice form. <laughs> There's enough water. To, like, let's keep it 100. There's enough water to go around. And all you really need is water. And water, you know what I'm saying, is what helps grow vegetation, which is food, you know? And and, and, and so we have enough an abundance. If, if everything is left to its natural state without being, you know, messed with and contaminated with pollution, you know, or deliberately by our corporations being, you know, uh, <clears throat> echo uh, terrorists, right? right? Where, you know, when they produce their products that they sell to us in plastic form, petroleum and all that, and then they leave all the, you know, toxic waste to destroy the environment. If everything, like, you know, the Native Americans and the indigenous tribes in the world, you know, they still live off the land today. They just still have agrarian cultures that they don't need to go to Walmart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Do you think that they're worried about the any viruses? I mean, not not as much as we are in the industrialized world. I'm going to give you an example of, a, of, of an indigenous group of people called in Melanesia. Hmm. Right? That's like off the Indian Ocean. They have a country um, in Melanesia, where, right? right? It's islands, a group of islands out there. And you guys go research this, uh, <clears throat> uh, but this this island has never been touched by like you know modern society. Nice. People there, which are still coin term primitive, right? So they still live off the land. And, and the thing that's interesting about them, they don't really like anybody from the modern world. Anybody from the modern world that comes in there, they're quick to headhunt them. You know that term, headhunter? Oh yeah, yeah. headhunter. You know, <laughs> so more or less. Uh, there's still, you know, primitive cultures out there that we will coin term primitive, but they still live off the land. They still live in peace. You they know? probably look at us like we're primitive. Yeah, and, and, and you know what's interesting? You know, we, we would call that as, as, you know, our Native American brothers and sisters, we say they live on a reservation. They're reserved, right? They're reserving and preserving their identity and peace to still be on the land. But, you know, what happens is we have megalomaniacs individuals that they view everything as they can own the land. And even in, you know, in Native American culture, they say, no one owns the land. No, we all, we all, it's our land. That's why they say in the, um, you know, this is our land, this is your land. You know, that type, I, I don't remember which song that is, but. Yeah, I remember, it's, yeah, we used to all sing that in elementary school. Exactly, yeah. That's it, right. It, it's this true. land was made for you and me, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know that's how we summed it up at the end of that. You know, because right. it's true. Because we we are of the land. You know what they say: ashes to ashes, dust to dust. You go back to the ground. Yeah. You know, and, and when you look at the customs of of indigenous tribes, how they actually used to bury, you know, uh, you know their ancestors that moved on to the afterlife, uh, they wouldn't bury them in boxes to separate no, them from the land. No, uh, they would burn them. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. You would burn them. You would put them like go back and watch. Um, all right, like the in the uh, you know, what I'm saying uh, <clears throat> Star Wars, like Return of the Jedi. You know what I mean? When uh, Darth Vader passed away, or Obi Wan passed away, and you had like you know Luke. Uh, you know he would put he would put their bodies into you know what I'm saying he would create you know what I mean fires for them. They would put their bodies. You know what I'm saying? On top of this, like, you know, type of author or whatever, yeah. made out of, you know, sticks or whatever, branches, and then they will light them up and then let them, they'll cremate them into the air. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, go back and watch it. You, you see what I'm talking about. 
So these were rights that were that were that were known, um, even in 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 the, in the time of nights, right? You had this movie with Sean Connery, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, I think it was Richard Gray. It, it was about the Knights of uh, Camelot. Oh, you, know yeah. you remember that? It was a 1990 movie, long time ago, and it was uh, Sean Connery. He was like, you know, what I'm saying, King Arthur in that movie. You know what I'm saying? And Richard Gere, he was like his, you know what I'm saying, his like one of his top knights or whatever, Lancelot, Sir Lancelot. And like after after Sean Connery passed away or whatever, they did a burial rite for him where they, they put his body in the same thing, but they put him in water this time and he had his, his body going to water, to water and in fire. So more or less, that just signified that you're going back to once you came. You know, that's what they say, back to whence you came, which is back to the land. Cause you come from your mama. Your mama came from the land and you're going to go back to your mama, which is the great mama, which is your mama is the earth, mother earth. That's what we say, right? So more or less, this is all synonymous. So what they do to us to try to keep us away from the land through our life, we are wearing souls on our feet. Get it? They call it souls on our feet that separate us from the land. This would be a time you go walking barefoot. Indigenous child, they walk barefoot. Yeah. So like, it goes back to like, understanding indigenous child had no fear. That, you know what they feared the most? They feared nature. <laughs> they feared, yeah, they feared, they feared they the said. hurricanes. They feared the cyclones, the tsunami. That's why they, the that's why they put out those movies, man. The Final Destination movies and like it, just all those like survival movies that are like, you know, nature threatening, man. And uh, I just saw another one actually, but this is not, you know, this is a f another fear movie. It's uh, also predictive programming movie, which is uh, called The Awake or the, the Awakened or something like that. It's, I heard about that. It's on Netflix, right? Yeah, it's on Netflix right now. And um, I need to watch that. It's, uh, it's actually yeah. talking about the cybersecurity attack that uh, Klaus Schwab was just. Yeah, we got to We'll talk about that further in our um, yeah. other, you know, uh, platform. Yes. Uh, cyber shoot, because that's what we're going to be dealing with everybody. We're going to be, you know what I mean, teaching cybersecurity fundamentals against social engineering so we can understand the internet of things to yeah. create countermeasures to protect ourselves, our souls, and our communities. You know but this mean? is all exactly, but it's all that fear propaganda, and it's all it's doing is honestly regressing us from our spiritual development. It's not progressing, it's regressing, and it, it kills the soul really what it does or it traps the soul you can never really kill it you can trap a soul but you can't really kill it um but it's it eternal it's a spiritual force and um like i said before the only way we can battle it or combat it is through love for oneself and courage and right and what it does fear leads to external externalization of one's true power and to the idolization of a parasite that sucks your life force. Yeah. You know, so anything that you're, you're externalized, anytime you're fearing something, you're what you're putting your thoughts out into the ether, which are they're one and the same, right? But you're thinking to the future, you're not present. And then that's already, that's already dissipating the energy that you have concentrated inside of yourself. And then you're feeding it into a funnel into this, you know, uh, that's that's going into the mouth of a parasite, basically. And you're making that parasite fatter and fatter and that rides in on your consciousness. So um, why would anybody want to do that? That's not even rational to give away one's power, right? Yeah, There's, like no, because of ignorance. Yeah, ignorance. Ignorance is what allows and lets us make mistakes. You know what I mean? When we ignore ourselves, our higher self, ignorance, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. That's that's what it means to me to ignore your higher self, because yeah. your higher self always talks to you. Your consciousness, you know, <laughs> it talks to you. Like, I'm gonna give you an example. You know, I like this rap video coming up. You know, this is one of like you know Dr. Dre and Eminem's. You know, oh, they had a song called Conscious, right? It's like these voices, I hear them, I hear them, and when they speak, I follow. Yes. Go back, everybody, and watch that video. Real deep video, because that video was about what we all go through every day, choices, man. Mm -hmm. You know, when we go through the choices of fear and anger and hate and jealousy and envy, you know, we always have these voices in our head. Yeah. And if these voices, these voices, you know, they can come in positive or negative. I, me personally, I've coined term these voices to being, you know, higher forces of a energy, you know, you would call them 
angles of light, angels and demons. Uh, but you know, it's just like you know, you watch the Looney Tune cartoons from back in the day, Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny, and you see on one side the angel and the devil. You know what I'm saying? And, and they're telling you in one ear, they're telling you one or the other. And that's what it is. You have wisdom telling you through the angel telling you the good things to do that'll help benefit you if you believe in yourself. Then you got doubt, anger, hate, fear of the devil telling you in the other ear on how you should, you know what I'm saying, react to things. So more or less, we have to understand it's all in us. It's There's never been us. a time you ain't been outside your body. The only time you go outside your body is when you sleep. That's in your dreams, you feel me? But when you're alive and awake in consciousness, you're inside your head. So, so don't let should... nobody or anything tell you how to perceive reality if it's not going to enhance your wellness. So I actually like, really like what you said. Um, and we should go back to what you're saying, basically. Would you consider people today, when you said the only time you're outside of your body is when you sleep and when you're in, and otherwise you're conscious, right? But some might argue that the majority of people walking around us are asleep, you know? That's why the I term agree. coined the term. I was once in that state. I believe we, we all, all were once in that state we until all, we you all start were. waking up, like getting older, right? Outcast had this one song on uh, the second album called AT Aliens. It's called Growing Old. Uh, everybody go listen to that song, real deep song. You know, one of those songs really like, you know, I say it, it, it <clears throat> enhanced my consciousness and purview of the world. That's when hip hop, I call it hip hop, high infinite power healing our people was, you know, based on storytelling, the art of storytelling. Even Outkast had an album and the song based on the art of storytelling with Slick Rick. Cause it used to be about, you know what I mean? You tell stories to visualize it. And then you go through the experience of seeing someone else's experience, then you know if you ever in that situation, what the outcome might be. That's the wisdom, right? Yeah. So hip hop had that energy of wisdom, and that's what it is. And they knew that the powers that be understood that. So, mm -hmm. like this song Outcast had called Growing Old, it explained to you that you know it is what it is. You know, when you're young, you're gonna be vibrant, you're gonna be energetic, you're gonna have everything at your disposal. Life is gonna seem like you know you're invincible, that's the word. That's, but then that, you're gonna yes. get old, and then you're gonna you got this, you're gonna slow down. You're not gonna Every move day. as fast. You're gonna be around younger people, they're gonna be moving a little quicker than you. But you know, they're gonna be, you know what I'm saying, naive. But you're gonna have a little bit more patience now. Yes, you're gonna no longer fear life because you now have experience, right? And I think that's what has to happen. We all have to go through experience before we can become our higher self and our truer nature. You know, what I mean, it's we gotta make some mistakes of ignorance before we become enlightened. Exactly, no, it's it's so true. And I think that it's like a circle, you know, you kind of start off fearless, but you have naivety inside of you. And then you go through, you go up into an adult, adult adultism, right? You get, you go through the training of being an adult, uh, what it means to be a quote unquote adult through schooling, the schooling system and through, you know, parenting and through, uh, society's programming right and then you break out of that you go through your life lessons and then you break out of that and then you become you know more wise and so it circles back when you get older then you become more wise and then you you actually sorry you go through the fear right as you're going through the programming you actually build up a, an accumulation of fear as you get go through the adultism and then you come out of that adultism um slowly hopefully losing the fear as you get older and older. Hold on, bro. Let me uh, put a pause to it real quick. Yeah. So basically what I was saying was that it's a cycle, you know, yeah. of growth. You start out fearless, but you have, you're kind of in a way naive. You grow through the social programming and um, you start becoming more fearful because you're trying to externalize your power to, you're giving away your power to others and um, by people pleasing, right? You're, yeah, right. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, eventually, hopefully you, you surpass all that, that stage of, of um, people pleasing and externalizing your power and it circles back to you again. And then you become wise and fearless again. So it's, it's interesting how that's a cycle, you know? 
So, and, and you know what? Not everybody go uh, gets it. Some people fall to the wayside. Right? They right. say the good die young, right? Is that yeah. really true? Exactly. Or the naive die young. <laughs> you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Because yeah. you know what I mean? They, they 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 couldn't understand patience. You know, we all were there. Like at the end of the day, you know, I'm starting to learn more about myself now more than ever than I did in the past when I thought I knew everything. Same here. You know what I'm saying? Now I understand I don't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? I only know what I can prove. Yeah, you know we what have... And what I can prove is based on experience. You know what I mean? And the experience that we have, you know what I'm saying, is vital uh, to at least hence the younger generation's purview in life because that'll make our society better. Because guess what? It used to be in the tribal times of indigenous cultures, which still exist today. It's just that, you know, things have changed a little bit because of technology and um, the current modern day economics. But um, it used to be in, in the indigenous tribes, the elders took care of the children. So when they got older, the children would take care of the elders. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's how it is. Respecting the elders, they used to be, you know, vital, right? But then now things have changed to where, because I, this is me personally, I feel it was a social engineering attack that happened, you know, during the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, with, you know what I'm saying? Mass incarceration, you know what I'm saying? Drugs in our communities. And you know what I mean? Just all these uh, policies that weren't beneficial to the, the working class. Mm -hmm. What occurred though, and you can see, you know, see it right now uh, <clears throat> through the communities, how they're so dilapidated and broken down and the mind state of the people, the mental you know, frustration that everybody's dealing with. Uh, you can see that the respect for elders is really not there because certain elders, they don't respect themselves. They That's didn't the teach the younger generation. Instead, they're competing with the younger generation. You still got the, the, the elders that don't want to, you know, they want to be respected, but they, they haven't done anything to get respect and earn respect, you know? And then the ones that, you know what I'm saying, that have done things to get respect, they're not given respect. You know what I mean? It's sad. And, 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 and the thing that is crazy is the backwardness of the society has us to where um, the people that do the less get the most, while the people that do the most get the less, That's you know? Right. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, the only way, you know, and, and that's chaos, that's confusion. You know, <laughs> let's keep it real, that's confusion. And so we have to understand that that's why you and me are even talking about this is because we are aware of this confusion and we want to change this confusion by bringing attention to the confusion and then knowing and answering the question why and solving the solutions by bringing it to the forefront and explaining our experience and hopefully like-minded individuals out there they will also see it as well, and they will enhance their life spectrum to enhance the youth as well. Because really, it's all exactly. about at this point in time in our, our current time and age, it's about the future generations uh, to come. You know what I mean? Because this virus that's happened, you know, it, mm -hmm. it really has affected our future generations to come. It'll never be the same no more. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, you know, this virus has now had it to where people could pass any day and, you know, with no symptoms that's crazy you know what i'm saying like and then even if you do get the you know the health and medical you know help that you're supposed to deserve to get you're not guaranteed to survive you know what i mean so we live in a world of uncertainty of confusion and chaos and that's and a lot of it is is actually back and forth of saying one thing and then retracting it you know the media yeah, does that yeah. and it's not even real like i mean i'm not saying it's not real i'm not saying the virus isn't real but i'm saying that uh the 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 there's always these updates that the cdc puts out and it's like oh okay one minute you could pass on someone who's asymptomatic can pass it on and then next minute they're saying oh actually that's not true they found that out in uh fauci's emails so it's like you know we don't know like what to believe and that's that, that's confusion yeah that's the, that's what breeds doubt exactly Hello, that goes back to the fear topic that's what breeds doubt when you know people are wishy-washy Exactly. We call it right. We call it wishy washy. Yep. You know, or, or, or better yet, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a line from Starface the movie. Everybody didn't watch that. I know that. Uh, uh, he's you know what I'm saying. <laughs> he's a pig that don't fly straight. You know what I'm saying. You remember remember when, when Scarface told he was talking about Frank or you know what I'm saying. The, uh, I might be the only one that hasn't watched the whole movie. Straight, a Hassa. You know what I'm saying. Everybody can watch that part. He's like he's a Hassa, a pig that don't fly straight. That mean. He don't know, he can't, you know, he's not certain on the decision that he want to make. Hmm. You know, he flip flops. You know what I'm yeah. saying? One minute he's this, this minute he's that. Like, that's our society right now. Yeah, it's you know, an inverted flip flopping. The media is flip flopping. The, the, the media tell you, you know what I'm saying? 
uh, don't breathe the air. You know what I mean? They didn't tell you, no, you got to breathe the air. Like, come on. And I mean, when I say that, I'm talking about wear the mask, don't wear the mask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't breathe the air, air, breathe the air. Like, come no, on. And like, you know what it is? It's also an attack, like we were talking about, on the, uh, the masculine force. Because what is the masculine force, too? The divine masculine would be firm. It would be decisive. It would be order. It would be structure, right? And oh. and uh, they're trying to invert. They're honing in on that inverted feminine energy and making it all like it's like erratic, you know. And then it, without the unity of the divine masculine and the divine feminine, then you have that chaos, right? The confusion. And then you have the whole society turning into basically um, weak. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, and it's systematic, bro. It's institutionalized, it's totally done, it's just... done to make people angry so they lash out. And when they're angry and lash out, then you bring in the justice system, right? And in the justice system, which doesn't bring justice, it just lines the pockets of individuals that have created a system that takes away more than it gives. You know, they, they lock you up, you know, they, they, they strip you of your rights. You know the new the new kicker is uh, you have a mental health issue. Oh yeah. You know, and, it's, and, it, and you know it's to the point where it's so sad where you know because people are so fearful of each other, you know, uh, people don't have time to have the patience to understand why someone is being the way they are. You know, I mean, people or, or have that compassion in their heart to just you know accept that certain people are the way they are and give them the space of freedom so they can express themselves and let them be you know at peace. But also. You know, we, we're at the, the stage in the age where, you know, people care more about what they can get from other people versus what they can give to other people. Exactly. You it, know what I'm saying? It's so much so that people won't even look at people in the eyes, you know, anymore because they've been traumatized. It goes back to the traumatization of the psyche, right? Yeah. Um, and so how, how, how has that happened over the years through media, through the things that you're saying with... Uh, you know, bad parenting, generational trauma, and not dealing with it. That's the main, that's the other thing. It's like uh, a lot of people are afraid of their own fear. They're afraid of of healing because that takes hard work. It takes looking in the mirror, like you said last in the last episode, looking in the mirror. And people don't want to do that. It's it's too painful. And the so it's it's really insane because you know, when you go down that path, you start identifying with your fear and you start thinking that that's who you are when it's not who you are. It's not yeah. anything close to who you are. And the more, like you said, like people like us come together, it concentrates that more positive force of energy. And we need that because a lot of times we get into like a very, um, like a high, a spiritual high, and then we collapse after that. And then it just goes back down to, our, you know, it's just it's like this. And But it has to be that way. That's, that's it, how it might have to be that way. That's it the might, frequency. That's the wave. And that's, that's not negative or positive. That's not necessarily good or that's evil. That's how your heartbeat rock. It's not necessarily good or evil, but what is evil is when it gets malignant. That's the difference. When nah, it I'm, I'm, I'm going to put like this because I was, you know, I dealt with electromagnetic frequency, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the spectrum and all that as an electrician, right? So check this out. It's like this, bro. You know what I'm saying? The the, the wave, the waveform, the, the the wider the waveform, that when it flows, right, when ups and down dips is, is less. You got more flow, free flowing energy. Uh -huh. But the more it constricts, like it's closer. You have yeah. more like 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 frequency, but that frequency in them hertz, we call it hertz. They're like they they give off a lower frequency. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. it might be a higher frequency based off of the hertz going like that, close by, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but it's still lower, like, you know what I'm saying? And it, and it gives off a, 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 a negative force. So what, what you want is a free-flowing wave. That's right. You don't want it, you know what I'm saying, too stuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it really is, bro. And, and that's what we're talking about in this world. This world, it used to have, yeah, bobs used to flow, you know what I'm saying? Things used to flow, yeah. like, you know, and even in martial arts. I'm going to give you this, this one. Martial arts, like in Tai Chi, right? Wing Chun, even Jiu Jitsu, Judo, the gentle way, right? Where you don't try to stop your opponent and constrict him. You know what you do? You let him go and you just help him get there. You see what I'm saying? But like in karate and like in Taekwondo, Tang Sudo, 
-hmm. you have more of a kia you know what i'm saying where it's like it's more of a contraction it's not a you know it's, it's a constriction a contraction and less of a free-flowing type of effect and it's that, more bipolar it, it builds more you know you have to use more energy on your opponent so if you miss your opponent on one strike you left yourself you know what i mean in an open position that's true you know? And so you see that now with like, you know, with MMA, mixed martial arts, you can't just have one way. You have to have different flowing bobs. So meaning that, yeah, you might, you know, strike your opponent, but if, if he tries to counter and he comes like, you know what I mean, to tackle you, you have to know how to let him go and then move to the side. And then, you know what I mean, let him fall on himself. And then you got to flow with him and get his joints to lock mm -hmm. the way that his body naturally moves. And all of this is, you know, the way to explain how everything works in society and social engineering as well, right? When people have the basic needs met, right? Which is food, clothing, shelter, right? Yeah. They can now gain what we call self-actualization, yep. which is peace. Maslow's higher than your needs. You know what I'm saying? But when you don't got that, when you got peace of mind, you always, you know, you contract it. You always like, Ugh, yeah, this tense. is all in you. You, you're it's trying like to find, cooker. you know, in a, you know, in the streets, you know what they call that? They say you're trying to find some food. <laughs> food <to eat>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because everybody in the, in the mind is a wolf mentality. You know, yeah. they go, yo, I'm a wolf. I, I'm going to eat your plate, you know. I, yeah. I'm looking for food, you know. And, and you know what? That never ends well. It's like what's what yours is mine. For food, someone else is looking for food, so you might be food for someone else. <laughs> and it's what it's what's what's yours is mine, what's mine's mine, right? That, yeah, that, no that, doubt. That, and and uh, what is it? So you know, going back to the the hertz that you're or the the frequency of the the vibration, right? Going up and down. Yeah. That, well, sound that, wave. They call what does it that sound lead wave. to? That what does that lead to though? What does that lead to though? That leads to bipolarness, Oscillation. right? Yeah. Two opposites, and then it's not unity. It's not any of that order. It, and like you said, um, everything used to be more free flowing. So we need to get back to that. And, and it literally is in your own body. It's free flowing because you know, when you like in a hospital and you hooked up to the, you know, the monitor, mm -hmm. you see your heart pulse. It's called your pulse. You see the same thing when it's natural. Beep, 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 That's beep, right. Beep, 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 it's free flowing. But yeah. the minute that you start having issues, right? It ain't flowing good no more. Yeah. It's like a track of heavy. You yeah. see the same thing in a lighter sector sex. Yeah. When, when you tell them the truth, everything yeah. is when you start lying with it, it's like uh... <laughs> <laughs> all of it is interconnected. It's interconnected. It's the same shit. Yeah. Check this out. You see the same thing, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> In a car, we call it an alternator, right? When when the car is moving, alternating, right? The, the pistons, the engines, everything good. But the minute it locks up and it starts like being sludged up and it stops, you know, it's like constricting, mm -hmm. it doesn't move flow. The oil, the energy in it doesn't flow better it's the same thing with your heart your heart has the same principle you know what i'm saying yeah and so without so you know when, you're, when everything's flowing well and you're feeling good your heart is pumping well your blood is good you can even hear it you can just close your mind right now close your ears close your eyes you can't close your ears <laughs> you know what i mean you, you, but, can. <laughs> you know what I mean? just focus within and then feel your pulse and you'll feel the pulse boop, 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 boop. yeah like, it's that tension you're good but the minute that you don't feel the pulse or the pulse is beating you know Beats per minute, that's what they call it. Beats per minute, right? Yeah. If they too high, you feel me, you know, that you guys do have issues. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's yeah. the key. The key is balanced through through the frequency of, of, of maintaining, you know, calm and getting that wave to always be a calm peace within yourself. Mm -hmm. And then outside yourself, then you can focus around you. And that's how you can tell other people's energy. If they, you know, when when, when and, and, and facial features do the same thing. Look at our smiles and our laugh. When yeah. we smile. It's like the wave is flowing. But when we, when we frail, it's like the wave is constricted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It, it, and talking about society having that that uh, tension, right? It's it's like a pressure cooker. You know, it builds, it builds, it builds, and eventually it'll explode if you have no if you have no outlet. And that's the thing. It's like uh, when it gets like this it moves so fast and so quickly and all the emotions are erratic that something's just going to explode outside of that pressure cooker. So the key is to find what you, what you love. What we naturally love is nature. Actually, we, whether you know it or not, you love nature. 
you might be afraid of nature because you've been told that you're that it's a threat to to yourself but it's actually what your that's your true love is nature so because that's your natural state so i encourage we encourage everybody to go back out connect with nature and um and to just get in tune with nature's frequency because that's that's our natural state um you know do you have any things to say about that oh yeah uh everybody go to the beach this summer that's right that's right that's hey if you can't make it to a park and you should be going to the park like every weekend at least to take a walk in the park helps your right. mind clean your mind yeah but yo if you can and you will and i suggest everybody should go to the beach go to the beach and ground your feet into the sand and mm -hmm. let the let the water come you know the waves come and hit your feet and then feel feel yourself it's called grounding you're, you're grounding yourself to the mother earth right and then you're getting that energy from the sun father son right <laughs> Yep. Then it's the sun, Mother Earth. It all comes together in you, and you feel good. You feel clear. You know, that's what you do. That's what you're going to do. You know, that nature, it's about balance, and that's how you do it. And you remember, nature works off the principle of balance through the trees, the plant life gives exactly. us oxygen. Yes, that's right. We give it carbon. This, it, so that's why you need that. That's the natural. And they give us day. oxygen. Staying in the building, the air conditioning all day. Around Wi-Fi, we're all you know, on, on your phone with your head down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Worrying about if somebody likes you or not <laughs> <laughs> because they didn't give you a like. Like, come that's, on, that's, not, that's not real life. Real life real. going outside, going to the market or something. You know what I'm saying? And I'm talking about farmers market. I'm mm. talking about going inside a building. Uh, find your local farmers market and you know patronize them. See what what other people are doing. Go to festivals. You know what I'm saying? Well, other people are outside enjoying the sunlight. You know, because it's crazy during this this pandemic. What they try to do? Lock us in the house. Yeah, of course, you it's shutting I mean? us off from our own, our own. Um, because you can't access inspiration or emotion, like higher emotions, higher frequencies, without you know being outside. You're gonna be locked down, as we are locked down inside of our houses, which we're not there now anymore. Well, we kind of still are, but. Uh, I'm not, you're not, you know, but many people are. And when that happens, you're shutting also the biology, uh, your, your own body uh, organics down, you know, you're shutting everything down and each organ in your body has a, has a brain, yeah. you know, so <laughs> you're pretty much just shutting down the brain of your entire body, you know? And yeah. so, yeah, I mean, of course, you can always do what you love to do. Let's say you love to paint. Let's say you love to uh, write. Those are all great things. But creativity is inspired by the movement of energy. So if you're not moving your energy around, you're, you're going to be stuck create, stuck. Creative, create, right. creatively, right? That's yeah. the word. So, um, yeah, I mean, the key is definitely keeping the energy moving. Don't let it get stuck inside of your body, inside of your, you know, your heart and your mind and uh, keep it free flowing. Keep it free flowing indeed. You know what I sum it up to be in, in this world, the space you confused where we live in? We gotta be mental ninjas out here. Mental ninjas, yeah, spiritual yeah. ninjas. That's right, you know what I'm saying? That's right. You know, and what that means is we have to master our shadow selves. And how does one do that? How does one master one's shadow self? Because that is a manifestation of all the fear that we have inside of us. So how does one do that? By accepting that you don't really have control. That the real control, you know what I'm saying, is nature itself. It's your nature. Your nature controls your behavior. So if you understand your nature, then you can modify your nature or behavior modification of yourself. Right. reprogramming your subconscious mind it really that's how you do it yeah and there's this there's this actual science behind it that's why the ancients studied you know astropsychology astrology uh it, these are the things that we need to get back to we need to get back to the ancient traditions we're not going to be living in you know we don't all have to live in the the you know the himalayas or like some kind of mountain and isolate ourselves forever but if you need to do that, great. If that works for you, that's great. Um, but the key is to integrate 
when you do isolate, the good thing about that is that you are able to self-reflect. And that's the thing. We're not really able to self-reflect that much, even when we're not moving the energies around, but we're stuck inside. Well, one might argue that you're able to self-reflect more when you're stuck inside, but what does that do? The, the devil's playground is what? Is when? When you're stagnant. Idle mind. Yeah, the idle mind, right. So that's exactly what a lot of people are doing. So, so you got to fill your mind with good thoughts. Yeah, exactly. You know, so some people be like, man, you too positive. Yeah, you're right. Because what else is there if you ain't positive, negative? Dig? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got to be, you know, self-positive within. Don't be a narcissist, though. I ain't trying to tell you to be a narcissist. Don't, totally don't think that, you know, you're better than the next man's plight. No, no, no. Now, accept yourself that, you know, you have to have empathy for the next man, you know, and, and, and if you can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to sum it up, because I did it this week. Spend some time in your own mind through meditation for 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. It's all really 10 minutes, mm-hmm. meaning that you, you turn off the television, turn off your phone. I'm talking about, or, or put the timer on your phone, you know, and, and close your eyes and breathe with mindfulness for 10 minutes. You mm-hmm. do that. I'm, I promise you, you're going to have a clear mind and you're going to think, you know what I'm saying, about better things to get your time spent with. You feel me? Because that's what it's about. It's about, you know what I'm saying, giving time to block out the noise. That's right. That's how you conquer the shadow self. You conquer the shadow self by knowing that it's not real. You know, it is what you make it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I had a song that I came up with growing up listening to I love the most, you know. I still listen to it to this day. It was on Nas's album called I Am. That's the, that's the album, I think his third album, right? His third studio album. Came out in like, you know what I mean? I think 90, 97, 98, you know? Real good album. He had, he had, he, had, he was like, a, uh, he had his face on the cover, but he had an Egyptian pharaoh type of, you know what I'm saying, face that was in gold. It was, it's deep. Everybody know, every class, you know, every real hip hop head you know what's popping with that. I've seen that but, cover. Uh, <clears throat> So he had a song on there with, with the great late DMX, Peace Be Upon Him. I know he's in paradise. You know what I'm saying? Blessings okay. to his fan. So anyway, <clears throat> I will say this. The name of the song was called Life Is What You Make It. You know what I'm saying? It was a beautiful song because when I when I go through struggle in life trying to figure out things, I play that song and I, you know what I'm saying? I meditate, you know what I'm saying? On that song. And that song go, go, go. It's so it's just a real song. It, it breaks down how you should feel about yourself. And it breaks down, oh, man. DMX had one of the illest verses on that song, you know. He, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not gonna, you know, say the whole thing, but I'm gonna be like, one of the lines that really got at me was like, you know, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> he said, "Every day, shit around the way, shit got me stressed." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and it's real, and that's how he started it off. You know, he lets you know that every day, yeah, you stress, but you can't give up. Yeah. You know, I got from that whole song that you can't give up, that life is what you make it. And at, at, in the verse, at the end of the verse, they said, I'm going to make it no matter what it takes. We're going to take right. it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how everybody yeah. needs to live their life every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't care who you are out there. You listen to me. Live your life to the fullest because you're not promised tomorrow. You That's right. You That's know, we're seeing that by, we're seeing people that dying at 50, 40, 30, 20. New, new infants is not even making it. So... You still here, so you got time. So what you gonna do with your time? Better take your time and and enjoy your time. And don't let nobody waste your time. Amen. That is right. I couldn't even say anything else to that other than, you know, (laughs) it's, it's it's, it's a waste of time to stress over things that really you can't do anything about. And um, even- And honestly, you can, you can, what you can do is control your emotions and your, and how you think. So how do you do that? You got to know how your mind, your thoughts and emotions operate. So, you know, a lot of that stuff has to do with not just going, you know, going within, but yeah, again, studying your, your astrology, your astro, astro psychology, knowing which planets, you know, align when you were born and how, uh, which energies, because each planetary energy has to do with, uh, it has to do with a particular energy. Each planet has to do with a particular energy. And that's going to tell you, you know, like your sun, like your moon is how your, your thoughts and emotions operate. Um, 
knowing what your moon sign is very important because you're going to know how you think and how you feel and why you, why you think the way you think and why you feel the way you feel, you know? Um, but a lot of the other stuff that is fear-based again, once again, it's not who you are and it's been, it's an overlay. It's a trauma that's, that's been superimposed up onto your, uh, into your blood, you know, it's been programmed inside of you. So what we have to do is just go back within, recognize it, identify what that fear is and separate that fear from our true selves, you know, and, and just realize like that was, you know, reflecting back to when that, you know, fear implanted itself in your, in your psyche, right? How did it get there? Well, you got to think back how that happened. And then you realize like, oh, it was not had nothing to do with me, you know, but that's a long, long process, you know, especially it's been it's not just trauma from this life it's trauma from many other lives that we've been incarnated into. So right, that's right. you know, tra trauma from our family bloodlines, trauma from our parents, our uncles and aunts, our cousins, mm -hmm. nieces, nephews. Yeah. Trauma from our bosses at work. Yeah. Trauma from our spouses, our girlfriends, our boyfriends. You know what I'm saying? Trauma from the everyday man and woman and child that walks outside. You know, trauma from the environment. And life, life is, is full of stress because at this time we were living the age of ignorance, the age of not knowing. So now <clears throat> me, you, and, and many out there, we are in the age of enlightenment again. And I call it the golden age. You know what I'm saying? The rebirth of the golden age is taking place now without us even having this conversation. Many, many workers of the light, of the real light, of the supreme light, not the fake light. You know what I'm saying? Not those that are just trying to, you know what I'm saying, benefit off the energies of others by, you know, deceiving them. Right. You know, or working for someone else in the shadows, you know, vices, you know what I'm saying, working to actually enhance the spiritual nature of themselves as well as, you know, others. Exactly. Uh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just bringing awareness, because that's the key to this. That's it. Like, there's nothing special to do. All you got to do is know now. There's gnosis. G-N-O-S-I-S. -S, gnosis. Mm -hmm. That's the word in Greek meaning knowing. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the age of belief of ignorance is over, man. Yeah. You know, yeah, what you believe, it, it, it was all about, you know what I'm saying, put in your mind through fear. It was put in your mind through the people that you first came into this world seeing. And those were your mama and the doctor. The doctor whooped your ass when you first got out your mama. Literally smacked you in the ass. <laughs> That's trauma. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right? And then you shot a light in your face. So they blinded you, by, blinded by the light. You feel me? <laughs> and this your man make a song about that? Weekend made a song called, you know, <laughs> blinded by the light. I'm blinded by the light. And he made that. Yeah, yeah. That sure. means when he was birthed. We were all burned, we were blinded by the light, and we were booked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They beat us. And then, and then you know what? To add insult to injury, they told us who we were. We didn't name our names. <laughs> <laughs> they told, they said, your name going to be this. <laughs> and we grow up, we like, why you, why you name like, my Why you name me Doodle? Like, <laughs> why you name me Doodle? <laughs> uh, like, at, at the time, that's how I, I was feeling. That. And I was mad at your dad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So to me, you would just do do. You know what I'm talking about? Like, come on. So I gotta go older. I gotta learn the system. Then I gotta go to the courthouse. Now I learn I can change my name for myself. That's true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got this. You know, like, come on. Like, you got, you know what I mean? Like, there was a time in the indigenous cultures where, like we said about the stars, right? The celestial stars and astronomy and astrology, right? Yeah. When a child was born, depending upon the attributes of that child in that specific time. They named that child that specific attribute of what he could have and what he could become, right? Yeah. And who used to do that? It used to be actually the grandmothers, hmm. not the mothers and the father. It used to be the, the great grandparents or the chief and the elders. The elder. The elders used to do that. The ones that had more experience with the spiritual nature of things, the shamans, right? That's right. You know what I'm saying? They used to be the ones that used to name the child because they understood the spirit nature of the child. So in like the Native American cultures, indigenous cultures of the land, you know, so all around the world, it used to be like, your name is going to be, you know what I'm saying, Speedy. Because, <laughs> you know, you, you, you're going to be a fast talker. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. We're gonna be a fast thinker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we still do it in the hood today. Ah, uh, still yeah. doing the hood where you have like you know what I'm saying names. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Nickname. Uh, people Monica. You know what I'm saying? They are, yeah, nickname. We call it a nickname, whatever. You yeah. feel me? And my nickname yep. was Kool Aid growing up because I had a Kool Aid smile. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I used to be like, oh yeah, all the time. You feel me? That's all. <laughs> like, all my '80s babies, y'all know what I'm talking about. So, you know what I mean? Like everybody has some type of, you know what I'm saying, a name or whatever that denoted a certain characteristic of his spirit. You know what I'm saying? And then like, you know, in hip hop, everybody still got that going on. And we it's right in our face and we don't even recognize where it really came from. You That's know what I mean? True. Everybody got all rappers got these nicknames or these 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 uh these alter egos. <laughs> That's right. It is. What Beyonce has Sasha. <laughs> That's right. And, you know uh, what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sean Carter has Jay Z. Yeah. You know, because he feels he's jazzy. He was always called jazzy because it was a spirit in him to be cool, to be jazzy. Yeah. yeah. You know, he had a mentor by the name of Jazz O. A lot of people don't know. Jazz O was his mentor, and, and he was a spiritual brother. Deep, and he's still a spiritual brother. The brother peace be upon him. He was like, when you go back and you listen to his work, he was spitting rhymes and flows, uh, a part of a, a group that Jay Z and all of them was a part of called, you know, it was called, you know, I think, uh, <clears throat> Original something. It was from Uptown, New York, in Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Everybody go do that research, and you can come back and let me know later. You know what I'm saying? Original flavor, I think their name was right. Hmm. So like you know, it, 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 and that's the time like when you had in the early '90s in our hip hop culture, rap culture, falsely called rap, because rap is the is the uh, industrialized, commercialized, you know, bastardized form of the culture of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Which was about the spirit and art form of expressing yourself in your community to enhance the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of it, right? So like, but in the 90s, you had like like good rappers. One of them was named Guru. He was, you know what I'm saying? Him and uh, his DJ called Premier. They were part of a, a, a crew called Gangstar. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And all of these songs were just like really thorough. And it, he had like, you know what I'm saying? A style called Jazzmatize. Like where it's like, you know, they put jazz on the beat or the lyrics and the hip hop, so they took the old jazz and blues, you know what I'm saying, and then they mixed it in, and then they would, you know what I'm saying, have it, you know what I'm saying, with hip hop that actually made sense. That had, you know, words, rhymes, beat, rhymes, and life. You also had like, um, cools called Tribe Called Quest, you know what I'm saying? Q-Tip, you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, Ali Shaheed and Fife Dog, like these individuals, they would, they would, they would have soul in their music. You know what I'm saying? Even Busta Rhymes, leaders of the new school, they had soul in their music, you know? You had so many different individuals. And don't get me wrong, you still got that today. You got guys like J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, you know what I'm saying? I have soul, you know what I'm saying? Many individuals that have talent on the microphone who play fiasco, you know what I'm saying? Many, many individuals. Even the young dudes that I believe they just need a little bit more guidance. You know, they 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 they, they kick what we call um a lot of drill music in Chicago, like guys like little thing like that. I, I just feel like they they have the energy. But if they learn the real nature of who they really are and not what society, you know what I'm saying, deems be, and they take away that trauma because they got trauma that's built up and pent up that I will not even understand, you know? You know, because they, they were they were raising that trauma, you know? And people always be like, what's wrong with these children today in the, in the neighborhood? What's wrong is that their parents never healed, their parents' parents never healed, and their parents' parents' parents never healed. 1950s, yeah. 60s, the civil rights ever caused all of this strife, man. You yeah. know, crack, 80s, baby. So you watching all these children that we see today, you know, that are rappers that are dying like flies. You know what I mean? Every week is a new rapper passing away. They didn't have the guidance because they were learning from the ignorance, the blind leading the blind. That's what I call it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm wise enough to know because I lived that life, you know what I'm saying? To understand in that environment, the mental landscape of things, it's peers that pressure you into existing in a specific mind frame that isn't necessarily yours you know yeah. right from wrong but you just follow it because you think that you know you'll be accepted self-actualization right the need to belong you know what i'm saying and that's what happens a lot out here we have a fear of you know what I'm saying not being accepted for who we truly are that's right you know, i mean jay-z said that in, in one of the songs back in the day i got this like mixtape and he, he was being interviewed and he was like he was like people are scared to be themselves mm -hmm. you know what i mean and it's real like we all, in a way, you know, even on social media, we front for the cameras, you know, awesome. IG models and all that. You know, like, 
You know like what I mean? Like before. it's probably for the camera. At the end of the day, they just doing it to be accepted. But the first acceptance is yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you accept yourself for who you are, and you know, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, accept yourself for your gifts and your talents. Everybody's unique. Everybody has a gift and a talent. Meaning that everybody has a unique fingerprint. We all don't share the same. So we got a whole everybody got a unique fingerprint. That means that everybody has a unique gift and talent to themselves. That's you right. You know what I'm saying? And back to that trauma. So like when we're dealing with like, you know what I'm saying, the inner city urban communities and the uh, lower middle class, you know what I'm saying? The poor, that's what I said, you know, but you know, that trauma that's built up through, you know, broken homes, you know, through the social engineering of, you know, <clears throat> children being born out of wedlock, you know what I mean? Yep, man, the immorality that to take place. Of course, what do you think the outcome is gonna be? Yeah. Chaos and confusion. So when people are all, you know, you have a lot of those individuals that don't understand it because they don't come from that. Like I would call them right, you know what I'm saying, right wing leaners that, you know, they come from a higher, you know what I'm saying, type of living because they, they've always had a conservative type of uh, existence. They've never mm -hmm. really suffered through scarcity. Mm -hmm. They've had enough in abundance. And more or less, they can't see the plight of, you know what I'm saying, social engineering upon their fellow man. They don't because, know what social engineering is. They don't even realize that this whole thing was a program, you know? And that's, that's just in America. This has been going on for, for thousands of years, you know, in all the cultures. Civilization after civilization, bro. Yeah, you not, know what just, I mean? not just in America, but all over the world. And it's it's really bad. I mean... It's really bad, bro. It's, and that's what I said now, that chaos, those individuals or those, you know what I'm saying, negative forces that put that chaos, they're trying to put it in order. But here's the catch. You can't put something. You, you, Pandora's out the box. Yeah. You know, y'all know the story about Pandora? Yeah. I go look up that Greek story about Pandora. You know what I'm saying? The only thing that, the only one that was only attribute was, or principal spirit that was left in the box after she let greed, lust, and jealousy, and, and hate, and every all out in the world when she opened the box based on her curiosity. The only thing that was left in that box was, guess what? Hope. Hope, hope. was the only, hope, H-O-P-E. <laughs> Go back and read that story of Pandora's box. Look, all those stories of mythology that we all learned in grade school, middle school, you know what I'm saying, in high school, for all my people that, you know, were educated, They're that had fine. the patience to at least graduate. You know what I'm talking about? I know you you learned, you know what I'm saying, Greek mythology, you know what I'm saying, all the other mythologies of other cultures and civilizations, right? But most importantly, Western civilization, really, they, they, they hopped on us knowing more about Greek culture. So... Basically, these stories, right? Like the story of Pandora opening the box and her curiosity. It has to deal with us today when we're at, you know, adolescent levels of life, trying to find ourselves. We we all curious as to, you know what I'm saying, engage into the world, because now we are adults and we're free. You know what I'm saying? And we go through experience. And like you said, we, we grow through peer pressure and the fear of not fitting in. And then guess what? When we get older, we hope things will get better. <laughs> we hope. You know? Yeah, we hope because they, you know, remember, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, hope is, is like, that's it. That's all we really can focus it's, it's on. It's based on faith. It's blind faith. It is. We hope but it's... at the end of the day, what else you got to lose? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's the difference between hoping and knowing something is going to happen, right? Yeah, but that's wisdom. That's wisdom. And that's the wisdom part. And then you have to train yourself to be into wisdom. That's right. It is a it is an ongoing training. I and mean, that's what we're here to do with this platform. We're trying to train people to get back into that original mind state of man versus wow. the fear mind state that everyone has today. And it's That's interesting right. with what you were talking about with the elders, how before, how things used to be, right? We used to be able to, um, the elders used to pass down the knowledge to the younger generations. But the reason, <laughs> how conveniently is it that this virus is attacking mostly the immune compromised, mostly the elderly and, uh, you know, immune compromised uh, young, you know, uh, people. So, it, it, you know, if you're getting rid of the older generation, then, Who's left to pass down the knowledge? Oh, and that's where we come in. That's the thing. So that's you know, that's intentional. We're gonna call. In my opinion, that was intentional. Double dragons. You know what Double I'm saying? Double dragons. We're gonna call. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
and the Ghostbusters. You feel me? Because we gonna we gonna bust all those ghosts. We are the Ghostbusters. The fact, we the Ghostbusters. We gonna call the Ghostbusters. Right. That's who we are. You know. Yeah. You feel me? We are the ones. You know, you are the one to save yourself. That's right. You cannot wait for a Messiah to come save you. You are the Messiah. You know, you can't. There's there's no time better than now to save yourself. And it's a what is what you know a lot of uh researchers and 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 uh people in the truth movement have been talking about this recently what is what actually constitutes true awakening does that just mean knowing a bunch of information and and spreading it and talking about it no it's it's all it's it's a feeling when you truly wake up it's a feeling of it's a it's a a, a perception a shifting of perception you know it's not just sharing transactional sharing information anybody can do that and it's not about ego it has not and once again it's not about ego it's about you seeing the world differently than you previously did and it, it really has changed the underlying foundation of your lifestyle and, and it's a permanent thing it's not there's no turning back once you actually wake up so I think that's just like remembering from when I, you know, back in my, you know, personal journey when I had a huge awakening and it's a multiple, it's, it's a, it's a, it's going to happen more than one time. It's not just going to happen once. It's going to happen multiple times, if not infinite times, but each time is going to be more, you know, greater and greater expansion. And it's, it's a beautiful process if you just go with the flow, but if you're fighting it, it's going to tear you down. It's going to bring you down into uh, a very destructive state state of ex of existence. You know, so don't fight the flow. Is all I, I could say with that. Right, and uh, more or less, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm gonna sum everything up with this one beautiful movie from our pop culture. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Created by Barry Gordy and Motown in the 1980s. Man, everybody know this movie. Bruce Leroy and Show Enough. Oh, the last <laughs> dragon. That movie sums it up right there. You know why? Because through the movie, Bruce Leroy had doubt through his mind. In the beginning of the movie, when he was training with his sensei, you know, his sensei threw the, you know, the arrow at him, and he caught that arrow with his hands, right? And he broke the arrow in midair. Then his master was like, "I can't teach you no more." It's like, what you talking about, sensei? Why wow, have I done something wrong? He started doubting himself, fear that you know he wasn't pleasing. Someone outside himself, his sensei. Because he, been... his sensei. he wanted his sensei validation and approval, right? His sensei was like, nah, it's not that. It's just that, look, you've reached the final level. And he was like, but I don't feel anything because you told me I would feel a glow when I reached the final level. And he said, well, I can't do nothing about that. So he's like, Bruce, was like, um, well, who can teach me how to reach, you know, the final level to attain the glow? And so his, his teacher told him, he said, well, you're going to go down to Chinatown in New York City on you know, Canal Street. And you're going to go to find a, a master by the name of some dumb guy, which is like, <laughs> it was an anagram of some dumb guy. <laughs> <laughs> Kinda Ill, like that. So he sent them to a fortune cookie factory and he, was, and he gave him a belt buckle. <laughs> and I don't want to do no spoiler alert, but I think everybody who's our age should know this movie by now. And if you don't go look at it, it's really popular. I know the movie. character. It's the greatest movie I think ever made. You I know, know what the... I'm saying? That explained about believing in yourself and also about what my brother Sujay and I, the Double Dragons, are trying to bring into everybody to uplift and empower themselves, right? Right knowledge and right understanding and overstanding. And uh, yeah. basically, they broke it down. Like, in that whole movie, you know what I'm saying? He had to face his fear of showing up. But it wasn't a hit fear of showing up that, that he was fearing. He was doubting himself of attaining that level of, of mastership of himself. That's right. Because everybody that trusted him, his whole dojo that believed in him, all the youngsters that believed in him, you know, they followed him through thick and thin, right? And, and the scene where, and this is an important scene because me and all my brothers and sisters out there that watch this movie, this scene right here, go back and watch it. It really touched me. It's a scene where Bruce Leroy humbled himself so his best friend Johnny in the dojo wouldn't get hurt by showing up in his goons. When showing up told him to kiss his converse, right? And he bowed down just for the love and care of his best friend Johnny. 
he kissed Shonuff's converse and Shonuff kicked him in the face and called him weak. But he showed right there that he had empathy and compassion, right? That power of care and love that was so divine. And when that happened, all of his, 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 his followers, all his, his, his students, you know what they did? They backed him up even further because they seen that he was willing to back them up. And at the end of the movie, right? The movie, the part that really touched me the most is the water part is when showing up is dunking Bruce Leroy's head into the water, right? And Bruce Leroy, you know what I'm saying, comes up and he goes through, he's thinking through his mind, through time. Remember we talked about that? Through all the things that happened through the whole movie where he had to, you know what I'm saying? He had to figure out that he was really the master that he was looking for, right? And then the female energy of Vanity, her name is Vanity. She used to date Prince back in the 80s. She was the main, uh, you know what I'm saying, a uh, uh, female character of the movie, the love character in the movie. And she told him straight to his face when they first met and he saved her life. He said, you sure look like a master to me, hmm. right? And he, when he heard that, and then he started thinking about what his master told him. That's when he came out the water and Shona was about to finish him and threw the punch and he caught the, the punch and you saw the glow started shining all over him. Oh, nice. He said, who was the master? You know, show the facts of that. And he said, I am. And that goes back to what I said through this whole thing about what really touched me growing up was uh, Nas's album, I Am, right? That cover. Everybody go look at that cover. That cover, it opened my brain up. It opened my pineal gland to, my, to open up my, my awareness because it had Nas's face as an Egyptian pharaoh in gold. That was him telling us through symbolism, right? Through symbols who and what we truly are. Because symbolism is the key, right? To open and unlocking the subconscious mind to program yourself to be the better version of yourself. That's you know right. what I mean? That's, That's right. right. I want to actually share that uh, while you were talking. I want to look that up, that picture. Is there a picture of him? Yeah, go down. That 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 right there is. Oh, there he is, right here. This is it. Get that one. The one with Bruce Leroy, right? There. Yeah, Bruce Leroy. No, no, that's showing up. Go back. Oh my. Go bad. back to the one with Bruce Leroy. You know what I'm saying? He's in the yellow. Down here to the right. Oh, he is. Oh, okay. That's it. That's the one, buddy. That's it. Last Dragon. It doesn't That's have a it. picture. That movie, everybody should, should own a copy of that movie. Because that movie sums up what we're doing, the work that we're on, and the work that you should be on out there doing right there is understanding that you are your own savior because the most high God lives within you. And that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? The breath of the most high is inside you. How we know this? Because guess what? <clears throat> I'm gonna break it down real simple. Do this. When you breathe your air, you feel the earth, wind, and fire. Right there. When you breathe in your hand, you know the most high is inside you. That light is inside you. You know that. The light of the sun is inside you through your breath, which is also right. known as the breath of life. The earth, the wind, the fire, the water, and the air. All in you, because all is one and all is all well. Is and when well. you got problems with like this pandemic, what was the most thing that this pandemic pandemic affected your breath. It affected yeah. your lungs, your ability to breathe, right? It, it, it's actually cutting off certain chakras too. The throat and the heart. That's right. That's right. Earth, wind, and fire. That's what you are. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you know, 1970s, they had a great R&B group. You know what I'm saying? A band by the name of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Go back and listen to their song called Serpentine Fire. Listen to all their songs. Get their greatest hits. You know, all of that. Because these were the codes. These were the light codes that were keeping us healed up while we were going through stress. You know, going through pain, suffering within our environment. Or what we call our neighborhoods and our communities, you know. We had music. Music was a healing force. Yeah. Like, look at how the music was in the 80s and the 60s and the 70s. You know what I mean? Go back and listen to Motown. Man, Motown, listen to the to, to the music of the Supremes. 
listen to, to the Jackson Five. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Otis that. Redding. You know what I'm saying? Listen to listen to the words. Don't just listen for the feeling, but listen to the words too, because all that mattered, all of that flow. You know, and then you had the '80s R&B music. It healed you. '90s, even in the '90s, when when hip hop was was, was reigning supreme in early stages, people didn't believe in it. And then rap music, even when it was gangster rap, the original gangster rap. I ain't talking about right. this this stuff you call, you know, what I'm saying gangster rap. No, 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 that stuff is is death culture now. But the gangster rap, like the NWAs of the day and the Ice T's and Ice Cube, they were actually speaking a message of awareness of police brutality that was hurting our communities. And how to heal from it through knowledge itself. Because that's what these individuals, they were really the pioneers of that time. They were really, they had a message, you know what I'm saying? And guess what? We're going to get back to that because it's the rise of the golden age. That's right. It's time for our golden age to rise back up. You know what I'm saying? We're bringing it back, man. That's it. So, with that being said, are there anything, is there anything else that you would like to say about uh, fear? Yeah. We must first conquer our fear by conquering the negative influences in our lives, right? And I'm talking about all the negative influences be people that doubt you or bring self-doubt in your life by telling you the wrong things, mm -hmm. right? Instead of, you know what I'm saying, empowering and uplifting you, they tell you the negative things. So you have to be careful and watch them and, and don't allow them, you know what I mean, to, to, to get in here into the king dome, because this is where you're the king of your castle in here. This is your castle great skull. Like he man, right. all my He-Man people out there, you know, I remember He-Man always had to, you know, say protect the castle great skull. Well, your great skull is your head. Your great skull is your gray matter in your head, <laughs> right? right? So this yeah. is your king dome. And you got to protect that. So don't let nobody tell you what you are and how to carry your life. You understand? You can take advice only if it empowers you. But anything other than that, just let it go. You know what I'm saying? Don't even give it any, pay it no mind. It costs you nothing. Jay-Z's line. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, also, I'm going I'm to give you this, everybody. I want y'all to go and get this book. A friend of mine, a close friend of mine who's into the spiritual knowledge, he broke this down to me. He's the one that uh, led me to uh, know this book as well. Really good book right here. Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. You know what I'm saying? So right. you get this book, everybody, and learn that this stuff that we're breaking down of you controlling your own thoughts and it becoming things, this is the science. It'll explain to you from front to back how to manipulate your own mind for yourself. Another good book to get for all my people out there, it's really good, is this one right here. You know what I'm saying? Living the Science of the Mind by Ernest Holmes. You know, uh, good book. This right here, it'll break down specific knowledge on your mental state of your mental health to enhance your mental health by knowing yourself even further. Because that's the key. The key of destroying doubt in your mind is to know yourself. Know thyself. That's the key. You feel that me? When you key. know yourself, nobody can tell you who you are. That's right. You know what I'm saying? I shine, you shine, we all shine. All is one, all is well. You know what I mean? We catch you on the next ride. Peace. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone out there for listening. We'll see you next time on episode four. One. Peace. Wholeness. Wholeness.